that evil heavy metal that your parents hate you listening to? <laughs> you know those lyrics about hell, demons and doom? What if I told you it's all real? I know. I was there. It's piss. That's me, Brody. My friends are losers. So we started a band. Check it out. Ricky Daggers. Is he dead? It wouldn't be crazy if the music had something to do with demons. Demons. <laughs> We're all gonna die. I translated those pages. But now, people are turning crazy. Like, possessed. Crazy. What's up? That was pretty cool. As is, I mean, the axe and the. You know, I'm not even sure I'm in the right tuning. Brother of Steel. And there you have it the trailer for Deathgasm. This is a New Zealand horror comedy film, and I really do like horror comedies. The trailer does a really good job of explaining what's going on in the movie, almost in a chronological order. So by watching it, kind of get a really good feel of what's happening there. But let me give you the basic plot line. So the story evolves around this kid named Brody, who gets sent to live in the sticks with his fundamentalist Christian aunt and uncle after his drug-addicted mother is put away and committed. After enduring the abuse of his new high school popular friends and jocks, Brody falls in with a group of misfits and fellow rockers, and they form a band named Deathgasm. They decide to rehearse with sheet music they find at the house of a reclusive rock star named Ricky Daggers. Again, this is all shown in the trailer. But they soon discover that these songs have the power to call down demons, some of which enter the bodies of nearby peers and adults, and of course, all of this crap is going to draw the attention of a local satanic cult leader and his evil henchmen who are trying to get the music. And finally, Brody decides and finds, discovers eventually that the only way to get rid of the demons and prevent this blind demon god or whatever from entering the, the world and destroying it is by playing the music backwards. Okay, so let's talk about the movie a little bit. First of all, you can tell that the director has watched a, a lot of horror films, particularly, you know, The Evil Dead, um, probably Shaun of the Dead and Brain Dead. Here's the reason why. Evil Dead. When you look at the adults when they get possessed, it's very much like Evil Dead. You know, the whole jerky movement thing and the distorted voices. So that's the kind of uh, possession, demonic possession things that the film has. Um, the kills are much like it is in Shaun of the Dead, where they're kind of awkward. It's just grabbing whatever is available and using that implement, you know, to get rid of the possessed people that are trying to kill you. <clears throat> So, finally, is Brain Dead. If you've seen that movie, you're going to know the kind of gore that is in this one. Um, a great example is right after the adults start getting possessed, um, Brody is in school and they see the teacher writing on the wall, you know, and he's all writing all this crap on the uh, chalkboard. And he starts farting, which is kind of funny, but then the fart turns into crapping blood and then. He turns on and starts, you know, projectile vomiting blood onto this one girl, you know, one student. So that's the kind of the way the gore goes. Gore is done pretty good. If you like gore, this, this movie is going to satisfy you a little bit. A um, couple of things about the movie. It has a big, long setup. About the first 30, 40 minutes um, is setting it up. And the reason, of course, is when you're watching a horror movie, you have to care about the characters. If you don't care about them, you're like, ah, I killed that a-hole already, you know. And they're kind of doing this by uh, the trial that Brody comes into, coming into this 
household that's very fundamental Christian, you know, oh, you better stop playing that satanic music there, boy. You know, going to school, getting beat up. There's one scene where he, his earring is pulled out. Really, they did a good job on the special effect there, by the way. But, you know, you, you learn to hate the bullies in the family, and that kind of helps justify it when Brody is, okay, I think this song summons demons. I'm going to do that because these guys are a-holes. Um, another interesting uh, thing about it is there's a variety of characters. Uh, two of his buddies are definitely comic relief. Uh, there's also a character named Zack who is kind of the anti-hero and a woman um, that his, who is his love interest named Medina. Um, sometimes the comedy gets a little campy, a little goofy. Uh, you see it in the trailer uh, when it's showing, you know, shh, up to the mountain there he is. He's jamming with a guitar and he got the naked new chick, almost naked chick, kneeling beside him. You know, the laser shoot out of his eyes and her top falls off, you know. Um, this is what happens when he puts on the headphones and, and is listening to, to metal. Um, the same thing happens again to Medina, his girlfriend, the first time she listens to metal. You know, you know she's up on the mountain with an axe and lesbians making out at her feet. Um, the thing is, the film uh, balances it well. They don't go too overboard with it where you're like, this is freaking ridiculous and you, you know, turn it off or fast forward it through it or something. Um, it's done okay. There's enough comedy in there, although it's not enough to really make you bust a gut laughing, you know, <laughs> you know, that kind of a thing. But it's enough to keep you engaged until the action really starts kicking in. Um, another big thing about this movie is um, the whole thing with the demons and the combat of the demons. Like I said, it's kind of Shaun of the Dead style. But the best part of the movie and what makes the movie worth watching is there is a scene after they've discovered, okay, 100% for sure people are being possessed. There's this demon thing that's going to, you know, come into this world. And the only way to stop it is to play the music backwards. Well, this means they have to go back to Brody's uncle's house to find the sheet music so they can play it backwards. Well, of course, the uncle and aunt are possessed. Well, they managed to get past them, lock themselves in a room, and they're looking for weapons. You know, it's, you're... Does your uncle have a gun? And they're searching around. And they find this box, and it's labeled Church Supplies. Well, they pull it out, and it's full of sex toys. This is the most hilarious part of the movie. In fact, there's a if you go back and you watch the trailer, you'll see there's a very brief little clip, and it shows Brody going, and he's coming back. Look what he's holding in his hand. It's a big black dildo, which he's turned into a weapon. That scene is hilarious and is worth watching the movie for. Um, my only complaints about the movie, really, uh, it could have had a better soundtrack being, you know, metal. I like metal. I think uh, it should have had, you know, took more advantage of that. Um, other than that, uh, the scares in the movie, there's nothing that's going, to, you know, to be what I call a butt clincher where you're like, okay, something's going to happen. You know, you start getting apprehensive. You see all the scares coming. So... Um, you don't have to, you know, be doing this when you're watching it or anything. You kind of see the stuff coming. Uh, it would have been cooler if they would have had something that just BAM, you know, and, you know, makes you almost shit your pants. That would have been, you know, a little better. But that's my only complaints. Um, I'm rating this, you know, an 8. It is an enjoyable movie. Um, definitely worth watching. It is available on Netflix. And so you can watch it, you know, for free. So check it out for sure. Um, what do you think about it? Put it down in the comments. Do you think, you know, it's pretty cool? What are your bitches and complaints about the movie? So let's put it out there. Let me know. And uh, I will see you guys in the next horror movie review. Later.